are counting down to the World Test Championship final between India and New Zealand in Southampton. And this moment is the moment when we talk to a man who defined a generation of cricket for us, the master blaster, Sachin Tendulkar. We shall look ahead to the final with him. Sachin, thank you very much for sp sparing your time. But first thing first, how are you feeling? How have you been? Um, we've heard about your COVID, you've recovered. You've also been donating blood, I have seen. Yes, I have recovered and uh, yesterday I donated blood. It, it was a uh, World uh, uh, Blood Donors Day and then the, uh, it was primarily because of my personal experience. Uh, one of the family members was uh, not well and had to go for, undergo a big surgery and, and lost a lot of blood. It was a traumatic experience and uh, you know, some unknown person donated blood and saved my family member's life. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it means a lot and uh, that's, that's the reason I felt that uh, not just me but along with me the entire team donated blood and uh, it's a noble cause so I would uh, urge uh, everyone if they are healthy and in a position to donate blood, please do so. Sajin, let's talk about cricket. It's always a pleasure to chat cricket with you. The legends of your generation, including you and several generations, would miss this key moment in 144 years of test history. Tell me, are you itching to be in the middle uh, and facing Trent Bolt, itching to be transported to Southampton? Well, I'm, I'm uh, waiting for the 18th to start. You know, in the afternoon, I'm already, you can see that I'm already dressed up in blue. So I'm really excited. This is uh, this is going to be a fantastic test match. Mm -hmm. uh, both teams have uh, performed well to get to this stage. And then uh, without any hesitation, I would say that these are the two top teams right now. But mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, uh, this particular match is something that the whole world is going to follow. The I number of eyeballs, people talk about uh, engagement level and involvement in test cricket this match will surely happen. Sachin, fans had voted Border Gavaskar Trophy as the ultimate test series. Uh, uh, would you say it's a little bit ironic that Australia is not fighting for the ultimate test honour? Well, uh, I think uh, teams have uh, been able to beat Australia. And, uh, we, we went and we played some incredible cricket in Australia. Because you know, the, the number of injuries that we had on that tour, I've never experienced anything like that in my entire career. And neither have I heard of. There were almost, uh, I think, uh, uh, 10 or 11 players who, who regularly play for India. They were not on that tour because of injuries and personal reasons. Uh, and, and then uh, the, that shows our bench strength, the guys who represented the country. Uh, did magnificently well and, and uh, we know that I mean, if, if the team goes out firing all cylinders uh, you can pull it through and that is exactly what happened uh, it was a team effort uh, every session if you notice there was a different hero there was a new hero and, and that is a beauty of uh, you know having a good bench strength mm -hmm. we were able to do so and we beat them in Australia who according to you has been the best uh, find of this World Test Championship cycle uh, of the last two years that you've seen there, there test cricket? There have been uh, multiple good, extraordinary performances. Uh, but if I have to single out someone, then uh, I would say Rishabh Pant. Rishabh has uh, uh, had a massive impact. And uh, there were a number of games where, you know, we were pushed in the corner. And uh, Rishabh had, has been able to pull it through for us. So so it has to be Rishabh. Though there are uh, in batting as well as in bowling there have been some great performances but uh, Rishabh stands. Uh, you've spoken about Rishabh, uh, the way you know, Mohamed Siraj has come through the ranks. Uh, do you see there's a chance for him to be fielded uh, in Southampton? See, I don't like to interfere too much in, in the playing 11, who should play and who shouldn't play because mm -hmm. I'm sitting miles away from them. Uh, I have not even seen their net sessions, neither have I seen their simulated match. You know, so it is up to the management, but I'm sure uh, it's, it's a strong case to be considered because when I saw him bowl, even in the IPL, he looked in good rhythm. Uh, 
but uh, it's up to the management to pick the top three seamers who've been bowling well. And uh, also the batters will understand when they're batting in the nets or even in a practice game, the way ball comes and hits the bat, that impact, you can make out who's in good rhythm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure uh, batters must have given that feedback to the, the management of that. Now, let me ask you about, you know, India playing New Zealand in this cycle. In the last two years, the only series that the Indian cricket team has lost uh, is against New Zealand in New Zealand. And now, as luck would have it, they are playing them in the final of the World Test Championship, but on a neutral venue. Do you think uh, the Indians will be able to have their revenge, turn things around? Yeah, I mean, see, ups and downs are there. You know, mm -hmm. if, I, if we lost in New Zealand, doesn't mean that we're going to have a tough time here also. I mean, yes, it is going to be competitive, but that doesn't mean that, you know, New Zealand is going to beat us again. They will have to play good quality cricket to to, to beat India. And then for Indians also to, to beat New Zealand, uh, we will have to uh, play well in all three departments, be it batting, bowling, or fielding. I think uh, those 50% chances uh, need, need to be converted. And uh, without that, uh, you know, it's not going to happen on its own. We have to turn up fully focused and fully ready to go out and deliver. That is not when you start figuring out things. We would have figured out a number of things already and then you go out and deliver. Playing England in the lead up to the World Test Championship final, many say that New Zealand will come in with an advantage. But what do you think? Will there be a definite advantage for them? See, when it comes to understanding conditions and familiarizing yourself with those conditions, it's going to happen faster with New Zealand team, without any doubt. Because the weather in New Zealand and the way it is in England at the moment, uh, it's uh, very much, you know, like being in New Zealand. Had it been in, in UAE or any part of uh, Asia, okay. we would have uh, acclimatized much faster mm -hmm. than the Kiwis. So I believe New Zealand will acclimatize to those conditions much faster because back in New Zealand also they experienced similar conditions. Mm -hmm. Had the, the finals uh, uh, been in Sharjah or Dubai, you know, anywhere in UAE, we would have uh, acclimatized much faster compared to them. So, but eventually, you know, uh, the guys have taught in, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you take it from the senior most player to the junior most player in the team. They have either played test matches or India A matches there. So uh, they're familiar with conditions. So it is all about getting enough practice, enough match practice. But due to uh, various challenges, you know, primarily because of pandemic, you know, we've, we've not been able to uh, get there well ahead in time. But uh, you know, we, we've got we've got some days. We, we've had uh, a simulated match also. So. So those kind of things will help to a certain extent. Mm. But to be honest, uh, there is no better practice than playing actually two test series before this match. So uh, it's, it's obvious that they, they have that edge. Sachin, from a pure uh, fan point, point of, of view, view, there are, are three, three um, you know, contests contest. that I have picked out. Williamson versus Bumrah, Ashwin versus Tom Latham, Rohit Sharma versus Trent Bolt, and Virat Kohli versus Tim Southey. Now, you may have a fifth or you may kind of pick out for me which will be the best contest. Because I always looked at it as India versus New Zealand. <laughs> so you have to, if you, if a batter has to go out and score runs, you have to bat well against all these bowlers. Right. Any batter. And if the bowler has to do well, you have to bowl against the entire team. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never thought of the fifth combination, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what that combination is going to be. It will be, it'll be, it'll be fun to watch. Yeah. It will be fun to watch uh, Rishabh play against uh, Santner or if they decide to play Ijaz Patel. Because I think, if I'm not yes. mistaken, uh, uh, Santner got him out in the semi finals of the World Cup, right? Right. Right. Somewhere somebody would want to settle scores. You never know. Also, in terms of you know the contest, everyone says that our Ashwin could uh, you know, turn out to be the X factor because of his. Uh, uh, record against the left-handers. Do you think the, you know, you have had a, a real uh, idea of Southampton conditions. If the pitch dries up, do you think it'll be Ashwin Jadeja uh, taking control of the game? Well, whatever I've heard is, uh, you know, there is some assistance uh, on fourth and fifth day. 
Uh, and then one more clarification, Ashwin bowls well against right-handers also, I feel, uh, not just left-handers. Uh, and when it comes to playing in these conditions, people uh, discuss a lot about the surface. Mm -hmm. But I also feel in these conditions with cube ball, if, it's, uh, if the ball is maintained properly, then spinners can do a lot in the air, which doesn't happen as much in India. You get some drift, but you get more drift in England. You know, so either you can, uh, Ashwin can get the ball to go away from right-handers or if you change the shiny side to the other side, he can get the ball to go a little bit towards middle leg. Those kind of uh, variations, one can always deceive a batter. Mm -hmm. and so it's not about always turning the ball big, taking the inside edge and getting all batters out at short leg. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Sometimes you can get the outside edge, get them out in first slip or caught behind. You know, for, for that matter, even left arm spinner is bowling. When the ball doesn't turn, sometimes that is also difficult to play because, mm. you know, if it's drifting too much, you know, you get the ball to shape nicely inwards or hold the shine again in the opposite direction and get it to go away from the batter, then you can deceive a batter. So it's not always off the pitch. Sometimes, you know, a skillful spinner mm. can, uh, you know, make the best of what the weather conditions also have to offer. What basically you're telling me is that it's about maintaining the ball in, in England and, and, and the entire yes, team. Will yeah, have... I mean, those conditions, uh, if you maintain the ball well, the ball is going to swing. And similarly, for spinners also, they are going to get the ball to drift in the air in whichever way they want to get the ball to go. Sajin, let me ask you a little bit about our captain, Virat Kohli. Uh, you know, a lot of talk around him not having scored a century since that big fall test against Bangladesh in Eden Gardens. You have, you know, in your very, very long career, you've gone through this period of, uh, you know, highs and lows. What do you think is now going through Virat Kohli's head? And what really, where does he really need to focus to do the turnaround? Well, every batter goes through this. And then uh, I wouldn't be too worried about all these things, you know, because uh, uh, every batter goes out to, to deliver the best that he, he's capable of. And not always, uh, you know, one is uh, able to deliver that. There are there are uh, patches when you are batting well, but you're not scoring big. And there are sometimes, uh, you know, patches where you're not batting so well, but you're scoring runs. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think he's batting well. So, mm -hmm. he, one one need not uh, you know worry too much about it. And uh, I'm sure Virat knows when the last Test hundred was scored. Because batters normally remember all these things. Mm -hmm. so, so he would want to make a big swing without any doubt. You know, I would like to ask you about two of our test specialists, uh, Ajinkya Rahane and uh, Cheteshwar Pujara. Rahane had that wonderful 100 in Melbourne. But, you know, again, he has been through ups and downs. Cheteshwar Pujara, on the other hand, have great memories of Southampton. How do you see them, you know, play out during the World Test Championship? And we have a long summer of tests ahead of us as well. As I said earlier also, ups and downs are part and parcel of any athlete's career. And Rahane played that uh, crucial innings in Melbourne. And so did uh, he play in Chennai also. Uh, he scored, I think, uh, 78 or 80 something. But that was an important innings as well. Uh, so so I, I wouldn't uh, worry too much about all these things. I would mm. much rather look at the brighter things. Mm -hmm. The, the way uh, as an athlete I've been able to con contribute towards a team and I would uh, focus on those areas uh, because uh, it's important to think positive, stay positive and have that positive energy flowing in the body. Very uh, important. Immediately make out once a player is slightly uncomfortable there in the middle, the body becomes tight. Your, your thought process is not clear and, and bowlers smell that. So, so it is important to, you know, surrender yourself to your natural instincts and then just go out and enjoy the game, follow the process and the process is just to, you know, stay focused in the present and go ball by ball. Results will follow. And so is the case with Pujara. Pujara has been uh, rock solid. He's, he's been terrific for the team. Uh, he, he batted well the last time uh, we played uh, on, the, on, the, on the same ground. 
So uh, he, uh, batsmen do remember the grounds also. If they have got runs, then you know you just walk on the field and you feel, oh, this is the ground where I've scored runs. It's going to happen again, and I hope it happens again for again for him. And uh, someone like Glenn McGrath and R. Ashwin, they remember all their wickets too as <laughs> batsmen. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So batters remember their dismissals, and, and the, the bowlers remember how they've dismissed batters. Do you so, do you remember your dismissals, Sachin? Uh, most of them, most of oh. them. I mean, off late, uh, you know, I've not discussed too much about cricket, but yeah, I mean, I would remember when I was playing. Uh, I would remember. I, I still would remember possibly. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. While India is yes, touring yes, England, yes. Um, there is another team that is touring Sri Lanka. In these corona times, do you see that these are times when, you know, India has to go ahead with two different teams, one in the white ball format and one as a test team, a team of test specialists because of the bio bubble situation? Yeah, because of the bio bubble situation and also it speaks volume of uh, our bench strength. You know, uh, we we have uh, you know literally uh, 18, 20 players there in England, and we still have a very very good side. I mean, uh, number of guys have uh, been regular members of the Indian team, so so it's a very good side, a very competitive, and, and I think uh, we should be able to uh, to beat them. You know, nothing though uh, we know that nothing should be taken for granted. Uh, you have to actually go out and deliver that knockout punch. It doesn't happen on its own. You have to put in those hard hours of practice sessions there. And then start every match from a word go. Because, you know, uh, when when you walk out of the field, the scoreboard says zero to everyone. It's a level field. And then you have to start constructing on it. And Rahul Ravid, as the coach of the team, you think it will be an ideal collaboration now, Shastri at one end, and Dravid at the other? Well, uh, these are two different things. One uh, one team is playing white ball cricket and the other team is playing red ball cricket. So, uh, strategies are going to be completely different. Uh, both players, I mean, both Rahul and Ravi uh, have played enough cricket to, to understand what's the need of the hour. So, you know, they won't be mixing things like uh, when, when it comes to white ball cricket, that Rahul, I'm sure, will only be focused on white ball cricket and encouraging players to play all those shots which are meant to be played in ODI cricket. And for that matter, Ravi will also encourage most of the players uh, to, to play uh, test cricket. Certain players should be given freedom to go out and express themselves the way they have uh, in the past. So, so I'm sure both these guys understand. Sachin, two final questions. And moving away from cricket, you've been a great fan of Roger Federer over the years. Uh, and there's a mutual admiration society there. Is your support shifting a little towards world number one uh, Serbian Novak Djokovic now? You think he'll go past FedEx? Oh, well, uh, I would I would uh, continue to support Roger uh, as long as he's playing because he's just brilliant. And I, and I know him, so, you know, I've, I've not met uh, Novak, but whatever I have seen, the best part of tennis is all three, I mean, top players, uh, Federer, Nadal, Djokovic, they all are good human beings. So, you know, it's not going to take long for anyone to, you know, start supporting someone else when the other person has retired. So, because they are also not just good players, but good, good human beings. So, so it, that would be an easier transition. Mm -hmm. Sachin, while cricket... I hope Roger continues. <laughs> <laughs> we all hope that Roger Federer continues for some more time. Sachin, while cricket will be on, this is also a big summer of sports for India. Many sports men and women have waited for five long years for the Olympics. It's now around the corner. Your expectations from the contingent and your message to them, really. Well, my, uh, my expectations, just like uh, our 1.4 billion people, that, uh, you know, go out, give your best. You know, and then the results will follow. Yes, we all want to have medals back home. Uh, we all want that, and uh, the athletes would want more than anyone else. You know, they would want to bring laurels to our nation, and uh, we'll be supporting them through their ups and downs. More so when things are not going their way, I think that is when we need to stand by them. Mm -hmm. uh, 
five years is a long time for preparation, you know, because they wait for that one moment, you know, for that, you know, they're literally looking to better themselves, uh, even by a fraction if they can better themselves, mm -hmm. that gives them results. Mm -hmm. and, and for that, years of preparation uh, takes place. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, I, I really feel uh, bad for it that, you know, for, due to pandemic, Olympic could not take place last year and uh, it has to happen but uh, their dedication their focus their discipline uh, we are that is something that we are extremely proud of and, and I, I would be praying for their success just like the rest of the guys in India. Sachin, one final question India has not won an ICC trophy in eight years now the penultimate one they said the one uh, in 2011 World Cup, they won for you. Now, when Virat Kohli and company goes out to grab this trophy, your message for them? My message is that the whole nation is with you. You know, uh, there'll be millions of eyeballs. Uh, you're going to keep us engaged without any doubt. Go out and express yourself. You know, give your best. Results will follow. Don't worry about all those things. Just uh, stick to your process and results will follow. I will be praying for your success. Thank you very much, Sachin, for joining us. And like you, all of us will be in blue. And can I tell you, I don't remember any of your dismissals. I remember most of your hundreds, though. Thank you very, very much <laughs> for joining you. me. Thank you so much.